Hi, my name is Cameron Carlson with AnimeLocation.tv. I'm here with my good pals, Nicole and John, who are the owners of MetsuriCon. Hi. Hello. Hi, buddy. How are you? <laughs> it's this one. Nothing. It's this one. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I need to adjust that. <laughs> Alrighty, so it's been a little bit since the last time we got the chance to talk to both of you. Um, it was at Animaticon. How has everything been going for MatsuriCon going forward, coming up, uh, and because the con's in August, we're in June. So who wants to talk? Um, we have a lot of new events coming out. Uh, June is usually the month where you can see a lot of things getting announced on our Facebook, social media, and our website. Um, our live events team will be building all kinds of new things. We normally are known for doing one of the first cons to have an escape room in the area. We will be doing two this year, which will be really exciting. And they will be themed with our theme, which if you don't know, is our medieval fantasy. So we're hoping to see a lot of cosplayers with all kinds of knights and dragons and all kinds of different fun things. Um, then in addition to that, with live events and programming. I know they're doing a lot of specially themed things with that. Right. Um, we have Tokyo Attack coming out this yep. year. We have, we, have our, we have Tokyo Attack coming back this year. Um, they are actually bringing in over 40 arcade machines to us. So we what have, did we have last year? Uh, we had maybe 24. No, no. Double. That's double. No, actually, it's more than double. I saw. I misspoke. 50. Fifty. So we have over fifty arcade machines coming to uh, to our game room this year. Um, also, um, if you are into cosplay, we have two cosplay events this year. Our highly successful Friday uh, Friday night uh, fashion showcase is coming back once again, and our normal Saturday masquerade is coming back again as well. Mm -hmm. And then, don't we have a whole indie gaming thing yeah, that you yeah. do? Yes, we do have our indie develop, uh, developer showcase that'll be bigger and better this year. We're going to bring in multiple indie developers uh, from around the area and around um, the East Coast and West Coast. They'll be coming in and they'll actually show what they've been developing in the past couple of years, and you get to actually try that. We might also have some surprises coming in. We're working with the industry, so we have some surprises coming tuned for you for the next <laughs> month. <laughs> I think I want to check those out. So uh, again, Nicole is in charge of guest relations for some of those that may not know. And um, John also helps out as well on the financial end of things, discussing it with Nicole. So for some of those that may not know, how hard is it to sometimes get the very large and well-rounded cast of guests that you guys have done? So go, go ahead and give a little explanation on how well you put together this wonderful cast list of guests for the, for the event. Uh, a lot of years of practice and a lot of no sleep. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, getting a guest is in some ways really easy. Um, number one, it's we do listen to our fans of the guests that they want to see. Sometimes, though, it is a little slower than you think. If you ask for a guest and you're like, I want so-and-so, we're not going to announce them in two weeks. But sometimes we will listen to what a get, uh, people are asking for, and then in the next year you'll see them. Just because one thing that a lot of people don't know, while it is easy to get a guest, at the same time it usually takes about 18 months. Just because as you start building, a network, find out who their agent is, um, get in contact with them. Not everyone's just on Twitter and bounces back and forth, and then we go back Insider and forth with info. lots of contracts. So there is a lot of effort in there and making sure everything's correct and that you know they're actually going to be able to show up for the convention. Um, but that is something we wanted to do several years ago when we kind of refocused the con, was doing a nice wide round of guests. We try and do different things. We try and do some guests with the theme. We try and get some of your big names that you're always excited for. We try and get some of the unique ones. Like one of the cool things about our con is that we've gotten guests that you've never seen before. Right. Like having Bridget Hoffman a couple years ago cool. and Julie Maddalena. Yeah. Um, and this year we have Jameson Price, who's right. never been to a con before. Oh, so, first -timer. yeah, we have another first timer. So really that's something exciting. my goal is, is I've been trying to bring guests that have never been before so you get something unique. And one of, Jameson has a lot, you can go on his Wikipedia, right. but one of the big ones we're doing this year, when we went with Medieval Fantasy, I decided to focus on uh, three animes, or four animes. The big one wound up being Fate. Uh, um, because fate just is so huge. Um, another guest to look up that kind of is hidden, you might not realize how important he is, is Tony Oliver. Yep. You look at his voice credits and they're kind of like a lot of like smaller roles, but then go look at what he directs. He has right. directed every one of your favorite animes, like and, every one of and them. Stage and, shows. All, and stage shows. Yeah. He his, repertoire is amazing but he does and he worked on Power Rangers um, so he can tell you all the behind the scenes about that his panels are amazing go to them but he directed um, the fate ones including the new ones coming out right now uh, fate apocrypha fate, fate heavens movie. feel the movie that's about to come out so there will be a lot of fate at Matsuri Con so <laughs> there you go um, we also have the main two characters um, for uh, fairy tale which right. is another perfect anime 
We have quite a few characters from uh, Seven Deadly Sins, which we learned from John's Matsuri Madness. If you love Matsuri Madness, here's the crazy behind that. Um, <laughs> but we have quite a few of the cast from that and the main characters from Sword Art Online. Right. So there's a lot of Sword Art coming on. So Bryce, Bryce and Jeremy. Yep. yep. So we have some really amazing guests this year. I'm really excited. A lot of new timers. Bryce has never been here. I'm not even sure if Bryce is... You, done one, Ohio uh, one Ohio convention. He's right. not been to Ohio a whole lot. Yes. We so, also have the main, um, have the, um, the main character from Final Fantasy 15. Uh, main character from Final Fantasy 15 and uh, RNA from 15, who is Kari Walgren, who I don't think has never been to an Ohio convention. If I. I don't know she has. Kari, I don't think has. Um, so yeah, especially with especially with the new uh, fully cooly season fully cooly season coming out, so, um, you know, she'll be at our convention. That's something you actually can ask her about. That's one of the other great things with us is we wind up with accidental guests for things. <laughs> Last year we just had all of Persona Five, total top secret thing, didn't plan any of that. Just guys. wound up with it. It was great. We wound up with all of Persona Five. Now we got people from Fully Cooly because it didn't come out, so whatever. <laughs> I was to say, because you got all three Erica's to show up, all different spellings of Erica, yeah, last year. So um, now there's going to be some changes coming towards the press side of the event. Uh, tell us what that means for you guys and how everything's going to work and fit in the press world of doing anime conventions at MetsuriCon. That's such a strange question to ask during an interview. Um, so, <laughs> so one thing that we've actually noticed around the Midwest that the, the, the press is actually not as connected with the convention uh, as with other events. Um, and one thing I want to do is actually cultivate that culture. Because a lot of times when you actually go to a convention in like the, in the Midwest, especially Ohio, it's just, oh, we're going to give you a badge. And you just go around, snap some photos, and that's it. There isn't any follow-up. There isn't any kind of nurturing with that. There isn't a community with that. And what I want to actually create is make a community with our with our media partners, with our press partners, people who actually blog, people who are you guys who actually do videos and put it online. Um, we want to actually cult we want to cultivate that relationship, and actually we feel that would be a win-win. Uh, for both for us for the con and for you guys to actually getting more views and more attention on your product um, and that's the biggest thing that I want to do because eventually it's going to help all of us I saw this in action at other conventions and it's something that you know seems it's gonna take us a little bit of work but I think it's gonna be a really awesome thing once we pull it off And following up with that do you feel that all this work will help get a healthy workflow about Matsuri con and word uh, for the for the con going forward I mean we hosted in August and it's un, uh, usually unfortunately right before Dragon Con so that kind of leans into some of the attendance but also it can help us too because it gives people who may not have the ability to go down to Dragon Con they can still Is get a great time <laughs> did they give me a dragon I wish because <laughs> I mean you are blonde and you do need a uh, three dragons I'm working on that cosplay. <laughs> um, I think I, I think ultimately that will actually help us get more of the word out about the convention, um, especially with more, the more um, media partners, the more press partners that we have, that'll actually help get our name out there more and it'll actually drive up our attendees, drive up more industry, and it'll just make a bigger convention and more headache for us. <laughs> I like the headache part and bigger, um, and again, being on staff at the same time makes it even better. So how do you feel, uh, oh wait, uh, football now, so how do you guys feel about the Bengals draft went this year? We're excited that they went with the uh, Buckeye to shore up the offensive line in the middle. Uh, wait a minute, I believe someone calls them the Bundles versus the Bengals? I don't know that's the last I had heard of them, but I haven't paid attention to no, football. We, no, no, she is not important in this part of the interview. <laughs> not important. I'm sorry, this part of the interview is important? <laughs> yes, it is. It's very important. This is the time where I can just go football, Wait, football, are football, football. More important than your con. One mm, A. <laughs> <laughs> but but we'll just say this: they needed a center. They got a center. They got the center that they should that they they needed in Billy Price, and he's going to be a beast. They actually got they got a good draft going on. Um, I think this is going to be a year for them to actually make some noise because. Baltimore, they got Lamar Jackson, but I don't think they're going to do much of anything. I don't know what the Steelers did because I don't care. Um, <laughs> Cleveland may be a bit of a wild card because they got so many people. So Cleveland could actually surprise people. Aren't the Steelers the ones that go to the Super Bowl? Not recently. <laughs> they cheat. So, so yeah, I'm very happy about it. So three words, yes, yes, yes. Alrighty, and uh, kind of uh, keeping things going, and uh, where can we keep up with you guys for fans uh, this summer? What news way of getting that information out? Go ahead. 
Um, a couple of things. One, we do have our website. I always like to remind people to check the website because while social media is awesome, you do have to scroll to find things sometimes. So check the website. We usually try and keep it super, super up to date with a lot of the news on top. You can always check all of the guests. Um, and it's been funny, actually, one of the strangest questions we've been getting this year is I've seen at least four questions come into our Facebook page asking us, as the guests that are on there, if they're actually all going to be there. Yes. Um, if they're all listed, we don't just list guests for the heck of it. They, they are actually going to be. We actually do have 18 guests coming. Um, so they are there for real. Um, and it, it's just, it's kind of amazing to me. And it's not picking on an attendee by any means. It's just, I know that it's kind of mind blowing that we have 18 top tier guests. So it's kind of cool. Um, another way is social media. We have a much stronger social media presence over the last two months. Um, John's team has been taking that up full force. Um, so we have us, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we have a Facebook page. And then we do have a newsletter. So if you want to sign up about the newsletter, you can sign up. Is it on the website? It's on the website, yes. You can actually sign up for the newsletter on our website. Um, the, if you actually visit us at the tables, you can actually sign up um, there with us as well. It goes out once a month. It tells you what's going on with the convention and other happenings that we put in the newsletter first. Alrighty, and last final question for you guys is what message would you like to give to the fans that are about ready to attend MetsuriCon and what can they do after MetsuriCon that would be very helpful and beneficial for MetsuriCon after it's the events taking place? I would say, first of all, um, you know, please get ready for a wonderful weekend. Um, August 24th through 26th, downtown Columbus. Make sure you already have your room. Make sure you've already prepared because you're going to save a lot of money. Um, but also, after, talk to us. Talk to us on our uh, Facebook. Talk to us on social media. We put up we put up a survey about a week after the convention, asking for your experience, and we we take that information to heart. So um, tell us about your experience. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you didn't like. We're, we're not. Our feelings aren't going to get hurt too much. Too much. I'll just cry in a corner. It's no, I cry no. A lot. I cry a lot. Yes. Um, speaking of pre-reg, when is the last cutoff? Because you oversee that. Um, August eighth. So August 8th is when the last time to save some money before at the door. And usually the pre-reg line is a little bit faster to go through. Yeah. Uh, the hotel thing, definitely. We are one of the hotels um, that uh, we don't have a prepay for. So you can go ahead and get your hotel room booked, get that out of the way. There is a last few set of rooms with the Hyatt. Um, and we're about to announce, release a few more rooms with the Hyatt. So you have some spots there. But even the Crown and the Drury, I think the Drury is almost completely yes. sold out. I think it already is. And the Crown is almost sold out. So get your rooms now or you're going to be walking a couple of blocks. Um, so you definitely want to do that as well. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for coming out and talking with us. I really, really appreciate it. And I look forward in the next two months to hanging out with you guys some more and just being silly with you as much as possible. Sounds good. <laughs> you hang out with us? <laughs>